Well, hello there, and welcome back, Farm and Friends, to another edition of Farm and Simulator 2015 with me, your buddy, Mr. Moose. And we are back in North Brabant on a very foggy morning. We are on day three. Yes, we have uh, forwarded the old time machine once again to day three, hoping that we would have some fields ready to harvest, but uh, we ran into a little snag as I did something stupid again. Go figure me. Make a mistake? Never. Yeah, well, anyways. Um, I, in my uh, idiocy, turned plant growth off by accident the other day. Or, uh, I don't know if I turned it off on accident or on purpose. But anyways, I turned plant growth off. And uh, when I turned it back on, we... Um, yeah, we are still waiting for the fields to grow, and um, I have fast-forwarded quite a bit uh, to get to uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to speed up a little bit to sort of burn off all this fog, um, and then we'll recap where we're at, and uh, we'll move forward with what we're going to do on this video here. So when you left me off yesterday, we, um, we had planted uh, a couple of fields fertilized uh, those fields and we were starting to sow uh cultivate and sow uh 49 so let's open up here and i'll give you a, a real quick view of where we're at uh 49 is planted and then we jumped over planted 7 11 and then i did 31 and 33 as well so um went ahead and we put in some multi-fruit as well as uh, our regular uh, items. So uh, where we're at, we've got two fields with canola, two fields with barley. We've got a little corn in seven. Eleven I sowed in oats. Um, then 31 is in wheat, and then we put some sunflower in uh, in 33. So uh, I haven't ever used any of these multi-fruits, the, uh, the kale, the oats, the rye, the sunflower. haven't ever used those. So... Um, you know, we're going to start adding those in and seeing how they go. So, and again, you looked at the growth stage. we got a long ways to go on growth. Um, and for some reason, eight's not even growing consistently. So uh, I'll fast forward or I'll mow some grass and fast track this thing again and see if I can get, um, see if I can get them all grown in. It's probably going to be, I mean, just looking at it, it's probably going to be another, um, you know, 10 hours, uh, 10 to 12 hours before uh, we get that done. And I don't feel like wasting the entire day. So we are going to do a quick video here for you guys um, on our solution for the front end loader. And then uh, so we can get the silage out of the bunker since it is ready to go. Uh, I couldn't screw that up. So we can uh, get this out of the bunker, get it into the mixing station, and uh, whatever's left over, uh, we do have a silo back in the back for silage, so we need to uh, to take care of that. So let's run in here. We're going to grab a tractor, and uh, we are going to make our solution uh, clear. So there's the old Aerostar, and we talked about we would probably sell the Aerostar. To uh, or the Agro Star, we were going to sell it to uh, to get uh, enough money to buy a front end loader. Well, looking through my options of what to do, uh, if I sold this guy off and take it to the shop, I'm only going to get about twenty five, uh, twenty eight thousand dollars for it. So that's not really a good solution. Um, because we would still have to sell off every bit of the corn we have. Because um, we've only got about, I think I've got 75,000 unit liters of corn, which is, you know, maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth. So, because each trailer is only making about five grand, So, that's not really... I mean, that wouldn't get us even close. A new front-end loader is $54,000 uh, if I use the John Deere modded one. The smallest in-game 
uh, giant one, which is that Steyr, is $105,000. And then the front end loader itself, uh, the loader, is another $5,400. And then you've got to get your bucket for another $600. So, you know, all that added, the cheapest option you come up with with a front end loader is, uh, is $6,000. I mean, it's $60,000, excuse me. This is just not going to be an option for us. So what else is available to us? Well, if we look in the store here, under mods, I do have a couple of options. And, um, well, there's one. I had this conveyor belt, and I thought, well, I can get a conveyor belt. It's $20,000. But the problem with this conveyor belt is you have to have a front-end loader or a tail handler to move it. So that's not it. But about six weeks ago, this guy came out. And I hadn't really had a use for it uh, until now. It's uh, another conveyor, self-contained, built by Maru. And um, it's got a little dolly that you tow it around on and um, telescopes out. And it's only $7,500. Cha-ching! So that's going to be our option. So we're going to grab that, head back to the farm, and we'll give you... A look at it and show it to you so here it is all compacted up on its own little dolly and uh, we'll back up tow that to the tr back to the farm and uh, we'll show it to you and then we'll put it through its runs and uh, that'll be our video for this morning and then I will uh, Spend some time instead of just wasting the day by fast forwarding. I will go ahead and get a little bit more grass mode uh, before we fast track to the harvest. All right, so this uh, conveyor belt it comes, it's uh, multi fruit, it will do basically anything you need it to do, uh, whether that be uh, silage, grass, straw corn, manure, whatever you need it to, to elevate, it's going to do for you. So it's a great little addition to the farm. Um, if we, you know, when I first looked at this map and noticed that all the storage bays had conveyors in them, I really didn't see a need for buying one of these. Um, because I would normally would get a front end loader on every map. Uh, but in in interest of saving a little money and being able to get our mixed rations up and running so we can get our cattle, uh, this just made great sense to get it. It's available on several different modding sites. You can get it uh, straight from Maru's website, uh, which is, I think, maru.net. Uh, there's a link there. Um, and then it's also on Mod Hosters. Um, I particularly got it from LS Mods 2015, and I'll tell you why. Um, there is, uh, when you're looking for mods, you really have to be careful about what modding site you get your mod from, um, because there are there is just a ton of malware out there on all of these websites, and you really have to be careful about what you're getting and where you're getting it from and the reason I went to LS Mods 2015 it was it had a link to this particular file on shared mods and I don't find nearly as much congestion for uh, bogus links on their stuff it's pretty straightforward there's a link that says download your file and sending file and there are, you can see that there are some bogus banners, but not nearly as much as on all these other sites, especially like, and there's not as much trickery in there. Um, Upload.net, I have found has, in their download manager, has some adware in it, and I don't like that, you know? I don't need a virus or anything trying to get a mod to put on my computer so you got to be really careful that's one of the reasons I, I I pretty much stick with FSUK and 
um, mod hosters to get most of my mods from because I pretty much feel safe there. Um, and LS, LS Mods 2015, I found, has been pretty good. Um, or LS2, 2015 Mods. Or I think it's LS Mods. But um, really be cautious when you're downloading these mods. So, again, and I know a lot of people will say, well, only get your mod from the site that, you know, from the person who created it. You know, don't... Don't support people stealing their mods. Well, it's freeware. Once you put it out there, you know, it's like Linux. Once you put it out there for free for people, you put it out there. And, um, you know, if somebody moves it over to another mod site, it's there. So, um, I'm going to take it where I can get it, where I'm not going to get a virus. Um, and some of these websites... Some of these mod sites require you to register to get their mod. Uh, I'm not registering on your site to get a mod. No thanks. I don't need my information out there on another site. Um, I'm going to take it again. I'm going to take it where I feel most comfortable and I can get the mod. And if I've got to jump through a million hoops to get your mod, I don't need your mod. So, And if it's a really good mod, it's going to make its way out there. Somebody's going to push it somewhere. It's just like the Black Dudes Far. It's out there. If you look for it, you can get it. The uh, the self-propelled sprayer that uh, Giant put out that they only gave out to pre-orders. It's out there if you look for it. You can find it. So, um, you know, again, if it's a good mod and it's worth getting, it's going to be out there in the public. So... Let's get back to this one. So, anyways, uh, I'll put the I'll put the link to both Maru's site as well as uh, where I actually got this one from in the in the show notes, and that way you can go ahead and grab it wherever you want it if you like this mod. So, we'll, uh, show you the controls on it. To band it up is J, and to band it down is N. So, we're gonna unpack this thing just by holding the J button down, and you'll see it will unfold itself. And, uh, and jack on up. There we go. Come on up. And the nice thing about this conveyor is, uh, especially when you're using a bin like this, uh, if you were, if it was just a straight conveyor, you'd have to figure out how to get behind it and place it properly. But the nice thing on this one is, uh, by using your K and your M, you can actually swing that boom around one side or the other and place it so you have it offloading off to the side, which is how we are going to use it. So jump out and look at this thing real quick. Uh, you got your uh, control box here that would have, uh, I guess, your battery and, you know, I guess if you were going to raise and lower this thing from within you would have that you got lots of detail in there i mean look there's the drive belt for the upper mode motor uh and then you've got your conveyor belt the conveyor belt if you look at the belt itself the fins on it are actually a texture on the belt it is not just painted on there they actually have some relief which is very cool you can see all the different pneumatic struts. I mean, it's very well thought through. And then you see that arm up there on the front? This is another thing I like on this. It's uh, kind of realistic in the sense that um, if you've ever been to a place that has a, a self-unloader um, or a triggering system, that's what that is. That's a triggering arm. Uh, for this thing we'll pull forward just a little bit get this thing actually into the silage and you hit B to turn it on and it fills itself up and see that little gold bar that came down that's your triggering arm it looks sort of like a laser but it, it's basically it's a triggering arm in this game it's to sight you in to where you need to be but you know, I've been on a site before where you you have an automatic conveyor to where you drive underneath that conveyor. And uh, as soon as you get underneath it, 
there's a rod that your trailer tips that rod, which releases the brake on the conveyor and um, and starts it unloading. And to me, that's kind of what that is. But it's also, at the same time, it's sort of a little laser that lets you uh, see where your trailer needs to be to get underneath it to unload. So we'll back up to this trailer here with this guy. And you don't have to leave a trailer hooked up uh, to get into this. I'm just doing it for convenience because I'm going to have to reposition that thing several times. I've got the trailer free. So I'll just go ahead and leave it the way it is. All right, so we're going to drive up underneath this guy and fill up real quick. Okay, that's not actually a brake. That's looking at the rivets on it. That's just a laser. <laughs> Guess that's just to show you where it's going to go. And we'll run on through here real quick. And we will dump this back here at the mixing station. So if you've never used this mixing station before, and I haven't, but I've read enough about it. It's got three basic bins on it. It's been around for a while. Uh, it was actually an LS13 from what I understand. But uh, you got three bays on it. The first one on the left is for your straw. The second one, or middle one, is for grass. And this back one is for your silage. But you're going to put it in. You just pull up, unload, it will go in, and if you look on the front, you've got like a little glass tube on the front. You've got this glass tube right here that shows your fill level. And uh, so we're about two-thirds of the way with this. So we'll jump back in, and we will head around to get another load. So off screen and uh, while I was doing my planting and mowing, I did take a little time to bank some grass uh, into our grass storage here uh, because I do know we are going to need it for uh, our, uh, oops, I didn't need to release that. Um, we are going to need it as we uh, move forward with making our mixed rations. So I went ahead and took the time to bank a little bit for us. Um, using that mix station in, in, in any mix station in the game a lot of people don't realize this you do not have to use hay um, they want you to use hay and that's probably the way you should do it but you don't have to if you've got raw grass you can use raw grass to make your, your total mixed rations um, and that's what we're going to do uh, eventually I will probably get a little hay and start making some some bales but for now we're going to use straight grass and so I have the grass stored I've got about 265,000 liters of grass stored so that's going to take care of us for a while but eventually I will do bales because I just like to bale so pull back around here to this front bay you don't have to get real close and as I say that I'm not close enough so, pull in a little bit more. There we go. And if you, let's see if I can get here so we can see that glass tube. There we go, you see the tube there. And as it start, it continues to rise on up. And we get just a little bit more that we got to get to get it filled up. Uh, but anyways, so like I say, you, you we'll use uh, we'll use straight grass for it, and uh, and it's just not that mixing station. I I thought you had to have hay. Of course, the first couple of maps I did, I did everything with bales, and uh, I used hay for everything um, because I thought that was the way you had to do it. Uh, when I got the my big country map and I started doing it, and it had the the bay for grass straw and uh and your silage 
that's when I realized you could use just straight grass to do it. And that particular map does not have a mixing station on it. I do all of that with the in-game mixer. And, uh, and each, I started out with the little mixer and then I went to the self-propelled mixer. And both of those will take regular green grass or raw grass and uh, they'll take that in and make your mix ration so um, you know something something you can do if you want to do if you choose to do that uh, you may say well that's not the way you're supposed to do it and blah 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 I don't know uh, I, I've done it both ways like I said alright we're capped off here there we go so we'll just pull forward and the rest of this we're going to dump into this storage bay here uh, for later use. And you'll see all our grass we've got stored. And when we did our introduction video I wasn't really sure what these two bays here were. Um, actually I knew this one. This one's MASH. This is your uh, this mish fruiter is uh, your total mixed rations. So when you get a load of it and you take it and then you've got half a trailer left over, you just come there for it. Uh, this here is chaff. And then this is just bale storage on the end. I did go ahead and look up uh, a couple of them because I was like, what is this one? The one for chaff I didn't recognize. The Mishfruiter I recognize from my big country, so. Alright. Come back, fill this guy up again. And like I said, you can use this conveyor standalone. Uh, you put it in place, you don't have to ever worry about it. So if you wanted to use it in your cattle pen uh, to move manure, you can just set it in your manure pin and leave it there and then all you have to do is just drive up to it whenever you get it you just have to activate it before you uncouple from it um, but once it's activated it'll work without a tractor on it it doesn't have to have PTO um, so just keep that in mind the only reason I'm keeping a, a tractor to it is uh, it beats having to uncouple your trailer go recouple move it uncouple go get the trailer you know, it's just for simplicity for the video. And we'll get this done, and uh, we'll be one step closer to getting our livestock. All we got to do is get that barley field harvested, and barley or the wheat, either one. And uh, that'll give us the straw we need, and we can start getting cattle in here. Looking forward to that. I feel like we've actually made some progress at that point. Not that we're not moving along, but, uh, you know, mowing grass is getting old. It does pay the bills, and it gets a little cash flow going, and uh, helps us out because seed costs a lot. And fertilizer costs a lot on hard mode. So uh, all your expenses just add up. So there is definitely a necessity for mowing grass. But man, it gets old. I'm ready to harvest some fields. Do some livestock and uh, buy some forestry equipment. Go cut some trees down. Uh, we, you know, do something different to make money other than just mowing grass. make enough money so we can go get our plow back so uh or get a plow so we can start straightening some of these fields as well i want to clean some of these fields up where they've got these awkward angles uh to where they don't they don't path out right So yeah, what did we learn yesterday? We learned that you don't turn plant growth off uh, while you're planting. Or you'll end up with fields that haven't planted. 
or haven't grown at all. And the sad thing is I had everything planted, everything fertilized, and then I flipped it on. And, you know, because what it is, is I hate when you start fertilizing. You've got one side of the field's got some vegetation already grown in it, and the other part of the field doesn't have any vegetation at all in it. I'd like for it to grow uniformly, you know. So I had turned it off, sprayed all my fertilizer and everything, and then turned it back on. But what that did was of that, that time cycle that I had planned on having in between fields, it's going to eliminate that. Basically, all the fields are going to come together at one time. Even though eight, you know, even though those, those three fields that we initially did, they should still be six, eight hours ahead of all the other fields. And they're not going to be looking at the, uh, looking at the growth chart. It looks like all of them are going to peak right at the exact same time. Um, which is disappointing. I was hoping that we would have, you know, three fields to harvest. By the time we would get those three done, we'd have another three fields to harvest. But again, you learn from your mistakes and, uh, you move forward. That is not one that I have done before, and uh, I uh, won't make that mistake again. All right, just a little bit more to clear out of here, and then we will dump out and be done. And we'll pack up our harvester, or our uh, conveyor, and we'll park it. So, that's it. That's, uh, that's our conveyor, and a great little solution. So, if you're playing the game... And you find yourself in need of a way to move uh, any sort of fruit or uh, consumable in the game. And uh, you don't have the money to get a... Uh, you don't have the money to get a front-end loader right off the bat. You don't want to spend, you know, $105,000 in-game on the regular one or uh, $50,000 for a modded one. Uh, the conveyor is a is a is an option for you, and I you know 75 seems a little low for it, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm not gonna knock it, but I do think that's a little low of a price for it. Um, maybe 10,000 for it might be a little better price, but um, 70 7500 seems a little low. But again, it's just a, at the same time, it's just a conveyor and a battery. It's not like a, it's not like it's a vehicle that you drive around the map. So, um, it shouldn't be nearly as much as a tractor. Um, all right, so to compact this up, it has self-adjusting on it. So all you have to do is hold the end key down and it will start lowering itself. When it gets all the way to the ground, that boom will adjust over to where it's straight in line. And the whole thing will just fold right on up. And then you can go park it wherever you want. You could just set this thing in a bay and forget about it. Um, you know, which it may be what we do eventually. We may just set this thing uh, as we add greenhouses into the game. We may just set it in the manure pit and leave it there and again it wasn't my intention to buy one uh in this in this game uh well we've already got a conveyor belt in the manure pit so i don't need it there either well maybe we just hang on to it until we get a until we get a front end loader and be done with it however it does load silage really nice and fast take it to the bga and leave it over there For now, we'll tuck it in here, out of sight, and uh, we'll worry about it later. Alright, that'll go right there. That's a good place for it. Alright guys and gals, well that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Look at that conveyor. And uh, again, I'll put the links to it in the notes. And uh, if you liked it. Uh, go get yourself one and add it into a definitely good to have into your mod list 
uh, for a situation where you decide, well, I need something like that. Uh, it definitely will come in handy for you. And it's, uh, you know, like we say, it's a lot cheaper than buying a tractor or front end loader. And if you decide to play hard mode like like this and you're limited on funds, it uh, will become uh, something that you'll uh, be able to save a little money and still be able to function with it. So, All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, again, if you enjoyed the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe, uh, leave a comment for me, and uh, join me tomorrow when we go ahead and start harvesting the fields uh, because they will be ready, and uh, we'll get going with that. I did go ahead. As you see, I started using the garages. I moved the combine over here, um, and I've got the tractors uh, stacked over there, so that's where we're at. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow, and we'll get the harvester out. I'll do a little mowing grass today on this uh, on this map as I uh, fast track forward. When we get to uh, where the fields are harvesting, uh, if there's enough time left in daylight, um, we might get a field or two done before we move to day four. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. And as always, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks again for watching this video, and if you made it all the way to the end, well, maybe you liked it. So give me a big old thumbs up. That like goes a long way. Also, subscribe to this channel. I will update the videos every single day, so there will always be something new for you to see. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. Thanks for your support.